Hello and welcome to the Dream Job Ready podcast. My name is Dane Sharp. I'm your host and my special guest today is Alif Sampson, who's the co-founder and chief operating officer at Kemi. Kemi is a New Zealand-based edtech company that bears the same name as its marquee product, which is a digital documentation tool that's being used in schools and being used right now by over 25 million teachers, educators, and students across the world. So Kemi is like the new pen and paper in the classroom. How we're being used is that teachers can share documents to their students um, either individually or collaboratively collaboratively as a group, um, wherein they can annotate onto the document, whether they're, they're completing an assignment, a worksheet, or creating their new projects as well. So they can highlight, add text, even add video comments to it. Um, for example, if they're in an English class and they're doing a reading um, on a book or an essay, they can easily add their video comments or all your comments on the side of the document. So it actually gives them more ability to interact with their um, educational resources, whatever they might have. So they're not just restricted to like, you know, write a one paragraph reflection on this essay, but they can actually verbally explain their thoughts um, or, or record any any kind of reactions that they might have. So these are some of the tools that we do have. We have a lot of uh, tools that would definitely help um, the, the teachers in the, in the class um, in getting their work done. I think it has been very relevant in the current times because everything is going digital. But before, before COVID happened, there, we're already seeing a lot of transition go, moving on to digital classroom and digital work as everything is around the world. Um, how, you know, it's, it's good to see that they're finally embracing and getting into the digital side of things. It's not totally eradicating whatever we've done traditionally, but also trying to incorporate that into moving on to what's going to be the future of it. Yeah, that's great. And one thing that really jumped out at me when I looked at, um, you know, looked at the platform and, and tried to really do some research for this was was around, you know, obviously empowering the, you know, the student um, and the the teacher to to better collaborate and you know probably learn in a in a in a wider a variety of ways than as you said some of the traditional methods. Um, but it, it, for me, it really kind of hit home around the importance of communication um, and how we all communicate a little bit differently. Some, some are great, as you said, at, at verbal communication, others are written. And that's probably where I'd, I'd love to start, given your experience of you know, enabling and empowering uh, better and, and newer ways of communicating in the classroom. Being a business leader now, having this business for, I believe, at least over eight years, can you talk to me very quickly about what the importance you put on communication uh, in a workplace? We really value our team culture. I think that has been our one of our biggest goals um, into building this company is that we got to build a really good foundation. We got to have a really good team to start off with. And to attain that, we got to have really good communication and transparency within the company. So we've been Ever since the beginning, we've been very um, transparent with whatever is happening. Um, still getting the communication right because um, it's there's always adjustments that you need to do as your team grows. You might have figured things out when you were ten, and then here comes another ten coming in. We got to adjust accordingly. How will the communication work? What are the expectations from each other's going to be? what are expected from um, each of us as well. So it's a constant evolving thing in terms of communication, but it's it has always been on top of our minds that communication is definitely key to achieving whatever we want to achieve day to day. And, and what are your, what expectations, you know, what can you share about your expectations for both new starters coming into your business, but also, um, you know, maybe management level in your business to go and convey, I guess, the importance of culture and, and, and things like communication uh, to the rest of the team. How, how do you manage that as a, as a leader? How we, I guess we just, how we describe our growing team right now is like we're a 
big orchestra. Um, I'm not a music um, fanatic or something, but I always describe it as like we're like in in um, in an orchestra wherein the composers are the whole team led by the founders. We compose this beautiful symphony, um, and then we have the managers as the orchestra directors, um, and then the whole team being in the orchestra doing their own parts. But to achieve beautiful music, um, we got to be on sync, we got to be playing together and, you know, be aware of what's happening and what's going to happen next. Um, and we've always been, aside from transparency, we've always been telling each of our new employees as well as they join in that do not be afraid to voice out any of your opinions, any of your ideas. Like you got to own it. You got to own your role and you got to be always thinking about the bigger picture and not just being siloed into whatever role you might have because we still treat ourselves as a you know startup a small startup compared to the other tech startups elsewhere because we're currently under 50 but we still want to have this really open communication amongst ourselves really good collaboration like they shouldn't be afraid speaking out their ideas even though they just started um, or even though they're under a manager um, they they have that opportunity to put in their input um, into building what CAMI will be in the next couple of months because we evolve so fast. That's the beauty, I guess, that we love of being in a startup. That's why when we get new people to join in, we tell them explicitly, okay, this is a startup environment. This is how things will be. It might not be the same as what corporate life will be. Um, so it, it's just being clear what is expected from them and a lot of people who apply it are actually excited about it because they can finally voice out their ideas and they're not going to be told off right or wrong like for us it's always you know the the people that actually um, dictates what's right and what's wrong is actually your users not the founders not the managers it's actually your users so that said going back to communication, like having good communication within the team, sharing all these knowledge amongst us is very, very important. So that when each of us comes up with ideas, um, it's always well thought of and it, it always revolves around what would the user value most. Um, and in turn, it helps us with achieving our goals. And for each and one of us, even the team members, it helps them upscale themselves by challenging themselves of how do we see things or ask things differently and how do we solve that afterwards. So um, yeah, that's, I guess that's one of the biggest things that we're doing right now. Yeah, that's great. And, and, and if I can throw it, you know, put you on the spot a little bit more just for that. If the listener right now um, you know, is, is, has really enjoyed that and, and kind of thinking, you know, I've, I, I'm just not getting my chance to voice my opinion or my thoughts or I feel afraid to for a certain reason. Is, is there any kind of uh, past experience or any advice you've been given or have given to others to, to help them get over that and, and, and actually get that voice heard? Um, I actually, when, when I was in uni, I started freelancing and I did a quick full-time job. So I, I don't have good enough background outside of Cami in terms of giving my own experiences to anyone, but I've always, we, you know, the founders and I have always had this vision that the team will be this very collaborative team. And we know that that would be our strongest point. So we want to be very welcoming, I guess, and very clear to each and every of the team members that, look, um, whatever your role is, whether you're a graphics designer, you can still have a say on the product right? Because they, they bring in a different perspective based on their skills and their background, but also how they see each of the problems differently. Um, and also one of our key things is like we make sure that each and every one of our team members, we make sure that we talk to a user mm -hmm. at least, you know, once a week. Like we got to be relevant. We got to know the pulse, like actual pulse of the users. We're not going to go get some third party to 
tell us what to do or tell us what the users are thinking. It's actually us actually being onto that one one to one. So hopefully be more attached to the users will give them more confidence in voicing out their opinions because they actually have that you know information um, in front of them and they can put it together themselves. Yeah, I think you know, having the data, having that insight-led uh, uh, information from the customer, uh, it, it almost guarantees that you, you can't be wrong in, in many instances, right? Definitely. So hopefully that helps give, give that person uh, the confidence. Um, it might, my two cents, another one, a really good piece of advice I've heard in the past is, especially if you're coming at it going, yeah, I, I, do, I do have that information, I've got the data, I've, I've got the, you know, the right plan here, mm. is, is if... You, know, you you don't have the confidence or you're not getting the opportunity to speak up in that in that meeting or the, you know the board conference or whatever try and find someone in the business that you've got that good relationship that does often get a chance to to get their voice heard and and maybe approach them with an opportunity of you know how do I get my message um, you know across in a meeting uh, and I've seen and, and probably even done it in the past you know the option to just go okay I hadn't noticed that I'll, I'll throw to you a bit more often in the meeting or I'll I'll, I'll turn to you when the opportunity is right so you know, I, th I think that's that's my Definitely. two cents on it as well. Definitely, I I can see that very very useful. Um, especially you know each you know each and one of us have their own ways of confidence in terms of you know speaking out, um, and that would definitely help you know someone who's more introverted and more um, quiet, I guess, in terms of voicing out their opinions. But yeah. Now you guys have um, you guys have picked up some great accolades. Um, you know, obviously in New Zealand, but now starting globally as well. Um, you know, innovation accolades. Uh, I know you were a semi finalist of the Young New Zealander of the Year awards. Um, how Im how important is that? Even if it's more from a you know, reconfirmation and PR point of view for the business, how important has that been? Just to um, you know make sure and kind of reconfirm that you're on the right track with this business and, and project that you've been working on for many years. For us, we've we've always been U.S. I guess mostly U.S. focused, and right now we're seeing the benefits of us being in New Zealand. So having those accolades and like awards um, gives us a sense of I, I agree conformity that we are on the right track that we're actually doing something good here. Um, it is also a great way for us to meet people. Um, that's why we love going to awards, whether or not we're in there <laughs> or not, because you, you meet exceptionally amazing people and it's such a great time to pick their brains out, ask them a lot of questions about anything and they are happy to share their thoughts and their opinions, which is amazing. Um, definitely PR is really good because for our team, we're still small, like we have more than almost 26 million users now and there's only 45 of us in total so the ratio of the cami team versus the users is quite massive yeah. so for us growing our team has always been the biggest challenge because one we we want to make sure it fits our culture whoever we hire next and also we don't we're kind of trying to balance trying to get everything done because we have so much that needs to be done but also onboarding new people takes a lot of time a lot of effort from a lot of people as well so how do you balance that without neglecting your users so we're we're doing that dance so all these um awards i guess in recognition helps us um reach out to more people um, and share our story and then actually explain what we actually do and they would understand Oh yeah, Cami. This is what they are. They're a tech startup. This is what they do. They're passionate about education um, and technology. Therefore, we get the right people to come into our doors, which is very, very important for us. And look, I'm I'm going to simplify it even more for the user. Like networking. Um, you know, you're as you see, you're Definitely. a business. You're you're being used for over 20 million different you know educators students teachers at the moment that's that's big scale but i think you've just really reinforced the importance of networking whether mm. that you're an individual that's trying to grow their own network and, and grow their sort of career network uh, or whether you're a business so that that's hit home uh, a big time with me and just just on that as well I, i'd love to know 
um, you know, when you when you're trying to build a company and build a startup, um, you know, every every business is important. You know, every everyone that contributes mm-hmm. to society is important. But you guys are you guys are you know in the in the schools in in the education system uh, in the hands of you know. Our, our future generations and, and future leaders mm-hmm. of the world. So, this is critical stuff. This is this is important stuff, and it's it's something that's really dawned on me in the last six months as I've I've gone and worked on Together AI, which is in the mental health and wellness uh, mm-hmm. space for kids. And it's just it's really hit home every day. Wow, like this is serious stuff. You know, whether it's yeah. a, a good or bad, this is important. Can you talk to me about? I'm sure it's never lost on you, but how do you kind of continue to reinforce that? And is that just something when you walk in the door every, every morning? It's you know, it's, it's reconfirmed for you. How do you keep that alive? So uh, just to give you a background on how we decided on moving on to ed tech, because when we started, Kenny, um, if we were called Notable back then, um, we, we want to solve our own problems in the classroom. So annotation, collaboration, all the basic um, things that we struggled with. And then when when we started releasing it to everyone, we have attracted a variety of users. So we have lawyers, um, doctors, researchers, business people, freelancers, everyone, um, and then teachers. And during that time, there's only three of us or four of us, and we couldn't really focus the product well. So we need to decide which path we're gonna go for. Um, we did, we were very blessed, I guess, during that time, we had some grant from Education New Zealand to use this and fly off to the US and join a trade show um, and see how that works out. Because we know we have a really good growing user base of teachers, but we've never focus on that before because we're always looking like look lawyers love us doctors love us and you know easy easy to sell it to them because you know b2b selling is is quite easy for for that kind of angle so when we took that grant we went to overseas we went to the us we went to the trade show we actually met a lot of our early users in person Hmm. and they stopped by the booth and talked to us and they told us how it changed their day-to-day lives, like changed their lives. And some of them are quite emotional as well because they're quite thankful for for how Cami or Notable then changed their workload. Um, and during that time, we don't even have a full set of really good tools. It's all basic and there's a lot of things that we need to fix. But for them, that simple product version of um, Cami was enough to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So for us, we went back home and, you know, after that, we went to a couple more um, trade shows and we came to a point that we really have to decide which pathway we're going to go for. Um, We went uh, for a weekend out of town, filled our walls with um, some posters of all these potential direction that we may go for put the pros and cons and it was clear we we all stood in front of it it's education um we haven't figured out the most important bit during that time which is how do we sell but what we know is that we are passionate about building all these features for them because we know that it would make a lot of difference to their day-to-day lives um and we know that there's a lot of potential in that industry as well we know that it's growing it we know that you know it hasn't been changed for uh, decades we got to do something about it we got to break down the four walls of the classroom so that's when we decided that we're going to go for education and it has always remained in within our thinking um within the team and as our team grows we share that story to them and they all share that passion. Mm. Um, that's why we make sure that everybody in the team talks to a teacher because, you know, for us, we're not in the U.S. We don't know what a classroom looks like then. We do that. We, we talk to them a lot. And if we, before COVID, whenever we get a chance, we go to a school and do a school visit and actually be inside a school uh, in a classroom and see how a, uh, a class works um, and how we can further improve 
their their workflow. So it, it has always been ingrained in us that education really, really needs some change. And we have the passion and the capacity to do something about it. Um, and it helps us go through a lot of challenges like with the COVID when it started happening. Everybody was like, look, this is, this is it. it we got to make sure that we support and service all these teachers and the amount of growth that we've had so far is beyond our expectations. Um, it actually fast forwarded us five years of what we expect will be. Um, and our team has been amazing because they're dedicated. So they would spend a lot of time helping a teacher because we ended up even onboarding teacher on how to use a Google Doc or, a, oh. or something, a Google Suite. So you, before they asked us about Cami, they asked us, how do I do this on Google Doc, this document? So the team has been really, really good and very patient and very helpful. Um, it just shows how, how you know, having ingrained to each and everyone that, you know, education is what we're trying to solve. So every other problems or issues that arise, they're already willing to make something of it. That's a beautiful story. That's that's a great background. Um, you know, I think you know, you, and you said you know, passion and purpose um, really came out loud and clear there, which um, which I think is amazing. I think that's really important to hear by the listener, uh, whether you know, they're an individual in a company or or, or at the head. Um, likewise, you know, it's really coming out loud and clear the importance of the customer for you guys, and that that can sometimes get forgotten uh, in a business here and there which is which is terrible to say but you know, so, sometimes it does but um you know i'm hearing that loud and clear the importance of the customer and how that customer has really dictated um what cami is and, and where you'll go uh and i think you know obviously you mentioned the the uh, the impacts we've had that COVID has brought on uh and it's had some pros and cons depending on businesses and, and yours you know definitely it's it's the right time the right place for sure but um you know i'd love to know you've also had to deal with COVID. You know, you're, you're a mum, you're, you're a parent, and you're a business leader, you're, just, you know, you're, a, you're a citizen. Like, how have you managed to kind of, you know, steer this business in, a, in an <laughs> elevated five-year progression, as you mentioned, and yet still just enjoy the day-to-day outside the office? <laughs> Some people think it was, it was so easy for us because, oh, my gosh, this is the perfect time for education. Um, but what they don't know is that growth in general is, comes with a lot of challenges. So when, I guess, you know, falling back to having an amazing team, you know, rolling back to 2020, before the first lockdowns happened anywhere around the world, the team has always been keeping an eye on what's happening around the world. So we're already aware of whatever's happening in China and then it's spread to Italy. Um, and the team has been, I guess, mentally preparing for what's gonna happen next. Um, and during that time, I was on maternity leave. So um, the fortunate thing about it is that my husband is also my co-founder. So whenever he is at home, I would hear whatever he's, because he's he was looking after my teams. So I can hear what's happening. So I'm always um, up to date on what's happening within the team. And we saw how it's changing, I guess, Hong Kong then, Hong Kong and in Europe. And we've had users and teachers in Hong Kong tweeting us and blogging about Cami sharing how they can use Cami within their classrooms because during that time they're already moving to remote work mm. so we're like oh it's happening now it's getting so fast so we're already putting together templates um, that could be sourced out to Italy and um, Hong Kong while also preparing for our biggest market the U.S. because we all know it's going to happen it's just when so we're already preparing for that we're already preparing our campaign and we're preparing our team because um, we know it's going to reach New Zealand at some point. So we, we were actually, everybody was already work from home two weeks before the first lockdown happened because we want to make sure everybody managed to set up their home office comfortably. They have already mentally prepared for being at home or adjusting their new routine so that 
when it does happen, they're ready and they're not um, they're not quite stressed out about the tiny details of even setting up a Zoom meeting, you know. So that that was some of the challenges that we've yeah. encountered. Um, and also during that time, we've we've seen we've heard a lot from the teachers um, overseas outside of the U.S. how challenging it is to set up their own workplace um, at home and also trying to help older students and parents. The parents are now part of this. Um, parents, how they set up their um, remote work. Um, so we, we made sure that we have all those templates that they can use. And also we decided unanimously throughout the team that we're gonna give away Cami for free during those times. So we're like, look, we're even our sales team, they're they're already like, we're not gonna sell it to any of you guys. Just tell us how can we help you on board faster? Um, which is, you know, during that time we were we were quite lucky because we do have the runway to do that, but then we don't know how long this pandemic is gonna last. So there's a lot of a lot of risks involved, but then again, we gotta do what you gotta do during that time and just to give away the um, licenses for free. So when it reached the US and we've, we've seen all the, the schools um, closing down in the US, the team was kind of prepared on what to do. Um, however, the capacity has been bigger than expected. Um, our, well, our, our customer success team has been inundated with lots of tickets, lots of emails and lots of um, requests to do some uh, onboarding sessions. So the team has been working nonstop and you know they, they wanna make sure that no teacher is left behind in a way, cause we, we, we just, we had, we've been getting so many, um, you know, a lot of requests during that time. But that was one of the biggest challenges is like, as much as we want to grow our team during that time, you cannot just onboard people and get them fully functional and productive within a couple of days. So everybody knows that, okay, this is the best that we can do. It's just us. So how do we improve things? Um, thankfully, our users are very patient and they're, they're quite understanding that, look, everybody's having the most difficult difficult time so a lot of them actually created started creating resources for other teachers wow. so so when they encounter a new issue like how do you explain this to a parent they've created a document or a blog post about it or a youtube video about it which is amazing so it's gone organic uh, in our online communities have grown dr dramatically with each and every one of them asking questions, asking for help, and they're some of them actually helping each other, which is amazing to see. So, for us, like great, our team survived that big, the first couple of lockdowns, um, but also our early users who are very familiar with Cami, they know what to do. Um, they want to share their knowledge to those new users as well, and how to divert into um, digital classroom, which is, yeah, which is amazing to see. Awesome. Now, is that a, is that a really young team member in the background walking around there or was, was that a... Yeah. <laughs> she's our youngest boss. Uh, she's my one-year-old. Oh, that's um, awesome. And hey, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to skip it over just in case the, the listener missed it, but you not only work with your husband, you, you guys started the business together. Were you, were you ma married at the time when you started the business or can you quickly explain that to me? When we started a business, we were still in university, finishing university. So we we were dating back then. Right. Um, and I've always wanted to start something. Some I've always been passionate about technology, and uh, I hope you I hope you can't hear her. Yeah, that's uh, um, look one year old. It's, I'm a I've got a one year old <laughs> as well, so that's okay. The listener, the listener can hear, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So during that time, Hinge. Um, grabbed me and his best friend Jordan and he was telling us look 
there's this entrepreneurship competition in uni. We got to join. And he completed this form without showing it to us and submitted it without our knowledge. Um, Alev, you do everything non-tech um, marketing operations, all that stuff. And Jordan does the technology and he's going to be the business guy. So um, mm. we're like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> whatever because we're all really keen on doing um some sort of a startup so i yeah. guess that's how it started oh um, that's great so it started in uni and, and then sort of via a like an internal uni competition of, of sorts yes and um through that competition we've met bob who is now our chairman and um, chief revenue officer he was one of the judges and our mentor um, during that time. So that's how we met him. Um, we didn't win the competition. However, we, we, we hit gold by meeting Bob in after the competition. He asked us, look, do you still got, do you guys still want to do this? And we're like, yeah, definitely. Um, and he was the one who introduced us to our first investors, which is amazing. So good. There you go. So for the listeners still at uni, get involved, get into some of those competitions. Doesn't matter if you lose, as you mentioned, or exactly. don't win, but you look to, you know, next minute you've got 25 million users. Um, look, I, I, <laughs> I'd, I'd love to just end on, on one thing if I can, just because the, you know, again, sure. you, the importance of, of, of that user uh, has come through loud and clear. And you've got a couple of different users, I guess, which is really uh, interesting as well. Um, and you mentioned there the, the online community, which, which would really has obviously you know flourished uh, under under the mm. circumstance we've, we've had you know if you can hit home that for the listener that's that's in a position that they get to interact in any sort of way with with their customer the importance of fostering and, and looking after and really being authentic and truthful to the community if you can kind of end us on there please um yes here's a secret to our 25 million plus users we've grown without advertising this is all organic, um, and we 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 really focus on building our community as well. So, our early users since twenty thirteen, they're still with us, and we know each other by name. We're Facebook friends. That's how close we are with our users, um, because you know having like for us we're in New Zealand and they're in the US. They're so far away. We have no idea what their classroom looks like, feels like day to day. So for us, we are hungry to know more about them. So we talk to them a lot um, ever since the beginning and up to now, as I've mentioned. And we want to make sure that we, we listen to whatever feedback that they give us because we know that nothing is perfect and it has to evolve to whatever they need so we're always listening to what they say um, and we're always trying to nurture that and it just grows organically um, our Facebook group is so active right now with some of the teachers who are already there and it's just amazing to see that you know, initially when we started building the community and focusing heavily on trying to have a more organic growth, it's amazing to see that it's actually working. Because like I've mentioned during the, the lockdowns, we've seen some of our power users and early users creating resources for the new users so that they can help them on board because they're passionate about um, what they do and they know how Cami helps them day to day and how it can help other people too. So they they want to pass on that knowledge um, to, to each other, which is which is great. So that's that's amazing. Um, so if you do have, if you're an entrepreneur and you do have a chance to communicate and to connect with your customers, do that. That is way more important than figuring out or learning how to do a Google AdSense. Because when you make your in early customers happy, they would definitely spread the good word within their network. I get, I guess going back to that, like network is very important. Um, it may bring you back more customers. It may bring you back more opportunities. Um, but it is very, very important. Um, and it's, you know, it only costs you a couple of minutes a day just trying yeah. to co connect with them. Oh, that's amazing advice, Alive. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, and I think what you guys are doing it 
an excellent job. Like congratulations on all the success, and, and most importantly, congratulations on putting that that user, um, you know, at the at the number one, number two, number three in position um, by the looks of it in your business. So thank you so much for being uh, a guest on the Dream Job Ready podcast, um, and you know, nothing but success for the rest of the year for you guys. Thanks, Dane, and thank you so much for having this podcast. It's actually really, really informative. I've I've already shared it to the rest of my team, and they're loving it. So thank you so much.